I did post your your Thursday uh, uh, prayer uh, uh, teaching today. And so every week I'm going to post it on my Facebook page when I see it to remind me to post you up uh, so people can see what you're teaching and, and, and preaching throughout the week. God bless you. Thank you mm -hmm. for your support and your encouragement. But the person you're looking at is one of my closest friends, uh, in fact, the longest living friends. It goes all the way back to, <laughs> to High Park High School, 1975, mm -hmm. 1976, somewhere about that. Um, but thank God for him being in our lives, and we thank you for being here. He's going to be our guest uh, the first uh, Thursday in, in December, and that's, uh, that's coming up fairly quickly here, you all. That's coming up. So that will be uh, uh, December the 2nd. Is that all right for you, December 2nd? So we're looking at that, and Father, in the name of Jesus, as we get started today on, and I'm talking like I'm not recording, but this is live, and we thank you for an opportunity here on our podcast Every Thursday, Elder Jennifer Sills and I, every Thursday, and we're praising God because, if I'm not mistaken, we're into um, our 40th week. Hallelujah. This will be our 41st week. So we're close to coming up on that year. And we give praise and honor and glory to God for what he's doing in this opportunity. Father, bless this word. Bless the hearts that are listening. Bless the ears that may hear it. Uh, on Facebook, streaming live off of Zoom, and Lord, we just bless your holy name. And so we're starting today, and I'm gonna, you may, I'm gonna just uh, shrink the screen down a little bit because I want to uh, I'll read a couple of scriptures in particular. If you have your Bibles, if you have your Bible, it's gonna be a little Bible class, a little lecture, and preaching, teaching, whatever, and how the Holy Ghost leads us. But today's theme, the theme, the theme is moving from the anointing to the glory. And uh, we're talking about the manifested glory. We were talking about how do we enter into the presence of God? How do we get away from just talking about an anointing, uh, which is the presence of your gifts that God gives us? And we're not going to get into all the different gifts today, but I wanted to, to make sure that people understand how we enter and reverence the holiness of God. Uh, some of this comes from the text of, of um, teaching on uh, the God chaser. Uh, that we teach every Tuesday out of Tommy uh, uh, Tenney's book, The God Chases, uh, My Soul Follows Hard After Thee. My Soul Follows Hard After Thee. And we're in chapter uh, seven next week. But this week we were talking about moving from the anointing into the glory of God. And so I wanted to start this, this, this text off with some interesting things that I learned. And one of the things that text I'm using right now is out of one king, one king, um, and so I'm going to read this to you. Uh, if you have your Bibles, for our first king, we're going to start about the 10th verse. I think that's a, a pretty good place to start there. Otherwise, it, it's just so much history that we'll get stuck on. And I'll start at verse 9. And there was what nothing chapter? in the heart save. What chapter? What chapter? Uh, that was uh, chapter 8, first Kings 8. And we're going to start. Um, this is when he builds the tabernacle. And, and so I want to bring us to, to two points that I want to, actually three, but I want to start off with, with where we are now in verse um, uh, uh, nine, uh, verse 10, I'm sorry, verse 10. And it came to pass when the priests would come out of the holy place that the cloud, and if you have your Bibles underlined, cloud filled the house of the Lord. Let me read that again, because this is key, because I, I want you to understand and hear the word of God that you are the priest. And I believe that's in uh, Revelations 1, 3, and 4, somewhere in there. But it's in the first chapter of Revelations where the blood of Jesus that was sacrificed, that was, that was sh uh, shed on Calvary, he, he then calls us to be king and priest, Lord K, king, but to give you dominion and power to be able to rule and to manage those things that he created you to do and to be a priest, meaning to live a holy life and live a life that's allowing him to perfect in us the priesthood of who you are in Christ, because you are a spirit, not just a physical being, not just a human being, but a spirit and human. Amen. So the spirit of the living God dwells in us. And so I'm reading this to, to as I take my time today, because sometimes I get so excited excited, I'll rush. And I want to slow this down and, and, and really teach it to came to pass. So to, when it says come to pass, it already been foretold. And so now we're hearing when the priests were to come out of the holy place. So when, when, when Moses built the holy tabernacle, that's what we're talking about, the holy place, uh, there's a holy tabernacle that was made, and it had three courts, the outer court, 
the inner court, which we call the holy court, and then the holies of holies is the third court. The holy court and the holies of holy court were inside the tent. They were inside a, a different tent. Uh, there was a, a surrounding tent that uh, covering that. There was an outer court, and there were sheets, uh, or, or, or what would we say, almost like curtains, or there was, there was this cloth that was laid all around and connected on poles. And we're going to teach that in January, late January, the tabernacle. But I want you to understand that this holy place now is you. Your holy place is, is that place in your prayer closet that we're, we're asking the Holy Spirit to show up in our prayer closet and not just fill the house. When we talk about the fill, the fill the house of the Lord, we're talking about in the Old Testament, filling the house of the Lord meant that Moses was bringing forth what God told him to do. He built the tabernacle, but in 1 Kings now, we have this illustration of Solomon who has built the house for God, the tabernacle, the, the place of worship where they rest the Ark of the Covenant, and so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. The cloud represents the light of the glory of God. Now, there's a difference between the, the cloud by day and the fire by night. That cloud by day was a brighter, lighter cloud. And it's important to distinguish this because there's three different clouds. I'm not going to get into all three of them, but three different levels of clouds. So the first cloud that we're talking about is the, the cloud, the spirit of God that's moving, which is in a sense the glory of God the, that gives us direction in the middle of the day. So it had to be in the format and, and a shape of a funnel or, or, or however God used that. I'm not sure because I, I, I've never seen it for myself. Uh, but I, I see the pictures that we've seen, but I don't want to limit anybody's imagination. But the glory of God is what you saw. The glory is the beauty of his holiness. That's why the adoration of God of going into the house will bring praise to God because God doesn't didn't create us to come to him and just ask him for stuff. Mm. Amen. And so, and so let me let me back up a little bit. We're in one Kings. We're in one Kings. And I'm I'm going to uh i'll share this with with us on live uh as i share this document with with everybody uh because i think it will help to to if, if people are watching and see this on facebook that this is a real bible study can you all see the scripture text here and, and i'm i'm just is that okay? Can you see? And so yes. then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel, called all the heads of together, and, and, and to King Solomon and Jerusalem that they might bring the Ark of the Covenant. So he had built the Ark of the Covenant because, you know, as we study this, David couldn't build the Ark of the Covenant, couldn't build the tabernacle because he had so much uh, uh, um, war that he had been in, so much blood on him. For, so his son, God told him, they won't be you, uh, but it'll be your son Solomon. So Solomon builds the tabernacle. And then he assembles everybody. And so now they brought the ark, go to verse four. So I'm giving you a background. They brought the ark of the covenant, the ark of the Lord, sometimes as you read it, the ark of the covenant, the ark of the Lord uh, that was brought forth. Now notice, and because I'm going to go show you something if I can get a chance, that when David went to get the ark of the covenant, uh, and carry it out. They put it on a cart. I'm going to show you that in a minute. And and use the touch the cart and die. <laughs> Glory to God. But but here we're talking about giving praise and honor to God. And that's what I want us to hear, praising God, not just praising him, but giving him adoration. And I spent some time today looking up adoration where we're giving glory to God. We're acknowledging God. We're thanking God. So I want you to think of all the beauty of what you see in the world, all the beautiful mountains. When you look at uh, the, in the in autumn right now, we're in the season of autumn and the trees and, 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 the, and the leaves are changing colors. The plants are changing. The grass is changing and it becomes a beautiful color or you see some uh, pictures that look so beautiful with calm waters and reflections of mountains like a mirror that's the beauty and the glory of God that's the manifestation of adoration that God says even even the clouds worship him and adore him and magnify his name and so who are we to just come to God and just ask him for stuff without number one thanking you and praising you but he said give me adoration 
Show me and say to me that you love me. <laughs> we, you, you could not have married your mate if, 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 if you didn't tell her and she didn't tell you something about I love you. Hallelujah. There's got to be some love in this relationship. And so God has called us and created us, but he is love. And so if we know Jesus, we know God, we know the Holy Spirit, the triune God, and we were born and created in his image and his likeness, and he birthed us out of the thought that he had in his mind, said, let me make man. Let us. He said, let us, the Father, Son, Holy let us make man. And so, so we go to verse six. He says, the priest brought forth the ark of the covenant unto the house of the God of uh, the Lord unto this place, which was an oracle of the house. So it represented the place where, where the Holy Spirit of God, the, the ark of God, the holy place was even under the wings of the cherubims. In other words, the wings of the cherubim were on each wing, each end of the, of the ark. There were these two uh, cherubims and the cherubims had wings that covered and it represents the glory of God. It represents the eyes of God. It represents the wings of God. It represents the will within the will. All of these things that you read about in Daniel, this is saying that the power of God is a living word, and the cherubim spread their wings. When you say, cover us under the shadow of your wings, that's what we're talking about, under the shadow of your covering, God, under the shadow of your grace and your mercy and your love and your presence, your sovereignty. Lord Jesus, help us, because we've been honed out of stone. And so, li listen, now, the verse 9, there was nothing in the ark except the two stones. So I want to share with you in these two stones that, that Moses had received from, from, from God, the stones that God wrote with his finger. Imagine God called him into a mountain, into a thick cloud. I mean, that's, that's the second one, the thick cloud in the mountain. And Moses goes into the thick cloud of the mountain. That now he cannot be seen, and he's gone 40 days. And God gives him two tablets where he has taken, they say in the scripture text, I have written with the, it's been written with the finger of God, the Ten Commandments. But while that was being done, they're down in the valley <laughs> creating a <the> false god. <laughs> and so if you look at Ten Commandments, the movie, Exodus, you, 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 Exodus, you, you get some mis, mis Miss teachings on that, let me put it that way, because he didn't throw the stone down on them. He didn't throw the stones in the earth crack. No, that didn't happen. What he did was he sent the people, the Israel, the Israelites that were with him, the children that had given their lives to God and were willing to come to him. He sent those to kill off everybody else that didn't obey God because they were worshiping false gods. And I want to say to the world today, I believe God is speaking to the world and people are dying on, and, and millions of people have died from this COVID. It's a disease, it's almost a plague that, that and it's continuing now you have new strands because we don't want to realize that this is something that God has allowed to shut our churches down. And you have to ask yourself a serious question. Because God is not, a fa is not a God who has favor over some men versus other men. So God loves us all. So why would he shut his church down? This has nothing to do with your denomination. It has nothing to do with your pastor, your apostle, your bishop, your prophet, your evangelist. But it does have a sense of the office of those people who are in them as well as the body of Christ, who we are. The children, all of us are children of God. So there's no difference for God, and he sees us. But he's saying to the world, my spirit is not there. There's an Ichabod spirit in, 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 a, in, the, in the world today. There's a, the departing Ichabod, the kabod of God is the glory of God. So what we've been talking about is the glory of God. When he brought the Ark of the Covenant in, they were giving God the glory because the glory was in this tabernacle or in this Ark, and it was so beautiful, but there was so much power that if you touched it, you would die. If, if, if you didn't reverence the holiness of God. And so now the church is no longer given that kind of reference. Reverence, reverence. Uh, we don't, we, we kind of obulated or obviated uh, away from, we've cut it away, the holiness of God. We become common with the things of God. And, and the Lord is speaking to the world. If I give you an example, when David went to get the ark and, and, and he put it on a cart 
And he knew that he knew he knew that it wasn't supposed to be on the on the cart because the, the ark that was made to have golden staves or poles that went through the rings that were made of gold because it represents the purity of God. It represents the fire of God that purges us and so that gives us and brings us through Jesus to a place of salvation. And so the burning, the, the, the dying and, and, and the sacrificing that was given at the altars uh, of an altar of sacrifice lay now is no longer sheep and, and, and goats and rams and, and things of that nature. Now it's you bringing yourself as a living sacrifice. And mm. so when you look at verse 9 in, in Kings 1, uh, 8 and 9, nothing in the ark except two tables of stone. And I want you to underline st stone because Jesus represents the rejected stone. And so God hewn out of the stone out of the mountain and, and wrote on the, on, the, on the mountain and cut it out and gave it to him and said, here the tablets, <laughs> here the two tables, the tablets. The two tables represent uh, the tablets, okay? So those of you that are reading this, don't get confused. Uh, New, New Testament, um, King James says two tables. If you go to NIV and some other translations in, in that same verse, I think it's verse nine, it's going to say the ark except what was in it was two stone tablets, that Moses brought from Mount Harab and where the Lord made a covenant. And so these covenant is the Ten Commandments that was put in the ark. There were two other items that put there, but I'm not going to go there right now. But one was the rod that Aaron carried and the other was... Uh, Bread. manna from heaven, the manna, the bread, the bread, because he's the bread of life. He's the bread of life. And so, and it came to pass when the priests, as you and I, when we come into the house of the holy place, if you ever expect to experience an overflow and the, 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 the quickening, the impartation of the presence of the Holy Spirit, they're not just an anointing that touches you and you and you get excited. But I'm talking about the manifestation of the glory of God that fills you and a quickening where you begin to weep before the Lord, where he tell, ushers you in beyond the veil. It's, and, and we sometimes refer to it as sit you in a heavenly place or a holy place and reveal to you what God, and you can see that in Ephesians 1 and see it in Ephesians 3, that he lifted, he said that we see us in a heavenly place. And so that heavenly place is a place that's out of beyond the natural realm of your daily life. It's a place of worship. It's a place of prayer. It's a place where you're aboding with God and the manifestation of his glory would be illustrated as we talk about miracles and signs during the time of Azua back in the 1919, uh, Pastor William Seymour, who, who, who was an African-American uh, 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 pastor and brought in the apostolic and he was praying so hard that, that the anointing, the cloud, the glory cloud of God fell on the church and people instantly were being healed and being delivered. And people, they said there was a cloud that filled the tabernacle, that filled the church. It filled the representation of the glory of God because he had been praying so hard and the people that touched and agreed in prayer, touched and agreed in prayer, touched because we're all fitly joined together for the glory of God. And so that's why it's so important to have a, a spirit of oneness as we pray and, and get to the place that we're no longer praying what you want to pray, but you're in that, in that zone where God says, I've given you a prayer tongue and the prayer tongue ushers you into my presence because man not know how to pray except by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Mm. So when you get to the place where you practice praying, <laughs> there's another thing that takes over called the Holy Ghost. It's not a thing. It's a spirit. And it's the spirit of the living God that begins to give you utterance. And, and some people don't have tongue, but God will give you what to say. Before I had tongues, I would get how to pray and, and I would be praying things that I said, where'd that come from? And it's not you. It's no longer just you praying what you want to pray. It's being in the will of God because you want to come to God, first of all, with a spirit of humility, with a spirit of saying, Lord, here I am. I, Lord, turn it around for your glory. That's what repentance is. Remember when Moses, let me slow down. Let's go back to this. When, when Moses was on the mountain with the Lord and the Lord said, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to start. I'm going to wipe them all out because they down here on Mount Horat. I didn't told you to tell them to come to the mountain. I told them I wanted to talk to them. And now you up here have another 40 days and they don't want to listen. And, and so I am going to, and, and Moses says, your prayers, affect your fervent prayers and righteous, that you have the same relationship with God when you have intimacy with God, when you have intimacy with God. 
not just fellowship, not just relationship. It's not casual. This is moving to a place of away from just having an anointing that God gives you an anointing to do the work that he created for you to do. So he can give you knowledge and wisdom and understanding. The knowledge gives you the wisdom, establishes what God wants to do of how to build a house or how to build whatever it is that he wants you to do. You can look that up in Proverbs 24, 3 and 4. And, I, and, and you can hear me talk about it all the time, but because it's setting you in place to establish what God has given us to do because we want to be about our father's business. And so he filled the house with his, with his glory. And so the priest had filled, had come in with the, with the ark. And because it had came in, there was nothing else that could be done. And so I'm going to show you as we go into the lesson and then being led of the Holy Spirit that then, then spake Solomon, the Lord said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. And so I got curious after all these years, what is the thick darkness cloud? And I never, never thought about this. There's so much to learn about the presence of God, the, the, the thick darkness of the cloud. And, and if we go back to Exodus 20, uh, and I can't go there right now, but go back to Exodus 20 if somebody got that, and, and, and you look it up, uh, you'll find that, 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 that is, yes, yeah, Exodus 20, that the spirit of God was, was moving, and, and he told Moses to bring the people out, bring them to the mountain. And they came when Jesus came, when God came, the spirit came. You do know that Jesus is God and God is Jesus. Jesus is the living. He's the flesh. And, and, and I'm saying to the class last week, uh, as a sidebar, Exodus 33, Exodus 33, when around the 18th verse, when he's, Moses said, Lord, show me yourself. Show me yourself, Moses. And the Lord said, no, I, uh, no man can observe and see all of me. They, they, you couldn't stand it. He said, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll hide you in the cleft. And this is right after Moses prayed and asked him, Lord, don't kill the people because the, 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 the Pharaoh will, will mock you and, and Pharaoh will mock us. And Lord, you, you gave me this assignment. I can't go out of here without you. Lord, what I'm saying to the people that are listening to this, we need God and God, I can't do my work without you. I can't do the work that you gave me. It's not my work, it's your work. And if I'm gonna be about kingdom building, if I'm gonna be about doing the will of God, Lord, help us us to do it in a way that you're releasing not just the anointing, but let the anointing and the manifestation of the power of the authority that you've given us so that we're not satisfied with just some crumbs. We want the whole loaf. We want everything. You said you are the bread of Bethlehem, and Bethlehem means bread, and there's no bread in Bethlehem. Bethlehem represents the body of Christ, and there's no Christ in the church. They got some crumbs, but they don't come to worship you. We don't come to celebrate you. We don't, all we want to do is thank you for giving us some more so we can get some more. But we don't pray prayers and meditation of adoration. We don't have the intimacy in the world anymore because the church has sold out its soul, not any person individual. I'm talking about the world and look at the state of the world, the apostasy where people are falling more and more. The research to show you people are falling further and further away from the presence of God. And I come to let you know that the Lord calls you to be the priest and to enter into your closet, enter into his house, enter into his presence and come with the spirit of reverence, come with the spirit of surrendering, come with the spirit of saying, Lord, here I am, I repent. So Lord, I know that if I repent with sincerity of my heart, because the effectual fervent prayer according to your word is righteous and to thee the effectual fervent prayer availeth much. So if I come, because you're the only one that knows my heart, you're the only one that really knows how much I can bear. You're the only one that knows if I'm sincere. You're the only one that knows if I'm being intimate with you and how much time I spend with you. You're the only one that knows how much sacrifice this cost me. Lord, you know everything. Omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God. Do it for your glory. Release your glory cloud on us in the manifestation. That seeing in your vision of your world, in your life, the hand of God moving in signs and wonders and miracles. So you don't pray it anymore. You're praying, believing it, and you receiving it. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so Moses, Moses, Moses tells the people to come around and, and the cloud comes. I mean, I'm back in Exodus again, but the cloud comes and the cloud comes and, and the people get afraid. The people was getting afraid. Moses says to them, don't be afraid. The, the fear that you're feeling is in reverence to God. 
But once you have a relationship, he wants to talk to you. And that was so critical, brothers and sisters in Christ. That was so critical in our relationship with God that we missed, we missed something here when we did not listen to the will of God and we turned away from God. And now we're fighting battles that are not ours. These are battles that the Lord says to you in 2 Chronicles 20, 14 and 17. 2 Chronicles uh, 20, 14 and 17, but go to specifically to verse 15. And if you have your Bibles, look at 2 Chronicles 14, then Jeziel, the son of Zechariah. And these, and what I want you to do is I want you to put your name in your Bible, put your family name in each one of these names uh, that's being written out. I want you to, to put down then uh, upon upon then upon Jeziel, the son of Je uh, Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Matthew. Nia, the Levite of the sons of Asphah, came, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the coming. The Spirit of the Lord comes upon them. So I'm saying, uh, my wife's name, Jennifer, Elder Jennifer, Seal, the Spirit of the Lord come upon you in the name of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord come upon you, Pastor and Co-Pastor Jism. The Spirit mm -hmm. of the Lord come upon all of our children and grandchildren and the seed of a seed yet to become. And speak the word. The Spirit of the Lord is in the midst of the congregation. He said, he's here. Hmm. He said, I'm here. I dwell in you. <laughs> so the more you come to me, the more you discover that, that your natural mind is subject to the obedience of God because the darkness of, that we live in in this world cannot be consumed by the darkness of the world. The light of God that's in you cannot be consumed and the light of God cannot be consumed by the darkness of this world. Hallelujah. And so when Moses goes past, Jesus, I'm sorry, God, the, the spirit of the living God goes in the past the cleft. He says, I'm going to show you. So I look up what is the hind part? What is the hind part? He shows him, I'm going to show you my backside. So, so Old Testament represents, New Old Testament represents the foreshadowing of the coming of Jesus Christ. Old Testament represents the coming of Jesus. New Testament of grace is the manifestation of the fullness of Jesus in flesh, of God in flesh. The visible, go to Colossians 1 and 3, or 3 and 1. But Colossians will tell you that you come and, and you'll see that everything was made, was made for my glory. And this is the visible, invisible God. His name is Jesus. So the word, the word became what? Flesh. In the beginning was the what? The word. And the word became flesh. And the word was flesh. And who was the flesh? Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so that's, that's who your father is in the triune God. And so he says to us in 2 Chronicles, we always read, if my people who, who, who are called by my name, we call on your name, but you don't hear him talking to you. People of God, we've got we've to gotta come back to an intimacy with God in relationship <clears throat> to Christ Jesus because he sits at the right hand of God Almighty and he sent the comforter to watch over us and to guide us. He even sent encampments of angels to sit all around you that the glory cloud in the directions that I want you to go in that you don't have to hear cloud. You can read this word and I'll give you clarity. I'll take the scabs off your eyes and begin to reveal some things. That's why you can read this Bible sometimes and see something new. You can read the same scripture a thousand times. On that thousand and one time, Pastor Chisholm and the elder Chisholm will see something going to come up new every time because yeah. his ways are so much higher than our ways. Why don't you try my Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, says, he says in this verse is that the, the, the anointing, the presence of God, if the presence of God, see Jesus represents the Messiah. The Messiah in Greek means the anointed one mm -hmm. who has an anointing which is the oil, which is the Holy Spirit of God. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Remember, the scripture says, ask Jesus that, that the Holy Spirit. Can't hear you, Anton. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
6, 7th of the 14th. Well, the 7th, excuse me. The 7th is the first Sunday, so Saturday would be the 6th. Can you hear me, Anton? Yes. Can you hear me? No, it's very faint. Is that better? Uh, a little better. Okay. Hello? Maybe it's a, a breakdown in the signal because I'm up at, at 70. Okay. That's better. Okay. It's blasting my ears, but okay. All right, let's <laughs> okay. Excuse us, listening audience. We've had some technical difficulties. Uh, we are understanding that that we're using technology, and so the devil is a liar. But we're not discouraged. Amen. Amen. Uh, these things happen, and so we get accustomed to it. It happens on on the, the top radio, TV stations. They have the same issues every week, every day. That there's something that can go wrong, but we have got our hand in the hand of the Lord. And I, I want to go back to the scripture text, if you don't mind. And there's so much to learn from this, and I'm glad I didn't shut it down. And it came to pass, it came to pass that the Spirit of the Lord shows up. And I, and so I wanted to ask, I asked the Holy Spirit to guide me, to lead me. Uh, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share some notes that I've taken uh, that's not on the screen that you won't see, but I do want to again show uh, the scripture text so that you can follow along with me. Uh, was that helpful, Pastor Chisholm, as we uh, show the scripture text that people can see where we're going with this? Uh, so we're in we're in First Kings ten, and we're down here at the last where it says, verse twelve. Then spake Solomon the Lord said, "Well, the Lord said He would dwell in thick darkness." And I'm getting ready to go there in just a minute. I have surely built this house to dwell in, a settled place for thee. The king turned his face about and blessed all the congregation of Israel. And, and he said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which spake with his mouth unto David, my father, having said with him, with his hand fulfilled, saying, since the day that I brought forth my people out of Israel, I chose no city. So God is saying to us that I set in place even where I wanted, before even David became king, God knew where he was going to have the Ark of the Covenant built and who was going to build it. So it is already predestinated. So if you really want to understand Jeremiah 29, 11, that, that God has a plan for you, don't just talk about it. Don't just read it. Don't just read the word. Dig deeper to find out what is God's purpose for your life? What is his will for your life? And the way you find that will and understand the plan and the purpose for your life. So there's a, there's a plan that God has that gives us purpose that should drive the will that you have to be pleasing in the sight of God. So there's a plan in place that God has given us a purpose to, to carry out his plans that he has set in place far before the beginning of time, for he knows every hair on your body. And so he's given you Jeremiah 29, and we quote it, that we say, and then we say Matthew 6, they say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then that means some, the old man has to die. That means that you have to die daily. That means that you have to have a relationship with God that the Holy Spirit can renew in you daily, weekly, regularly, and a place where you get, where you know the leading of the Holy Spirit and you are no longer subject to the things of this world. You don't practice sin. You have sin in you, but you don't practice. You're not caught up in the nature of sin every day. Your life has been turned. You become a new creature in Christ Jesus. That's what prayer and Bible study and meditation 
and learning what is the, the, the steps of the, the different types of prayer, the prayers of adoration, the prayers of thanksgiving, the prayers of praise, and so the prayers uh, to break strongholds. And so there's so much that we're going to be learning over the next several months and the next year, just talking about as the Holy Ghost gives us to study and to read and to write this whole word about faith. Faith is not just a mustard seed. Stop using that as a, just a, a, a quote and understand what he's saying, that faith the size of a mustard seed is enough of your relationship with God that's sincere to move the mountain, mm -hmm. to show you how to get around the mountain. Because by divine providence, God will reveal to you if you just have a little bit of faith. So the, the mustard seed is just being a little bit of that faith of God, of his word, because it's a living word and it becomes alive in us. And so this dark cloud, this dark cloud, this is not going to be on the screen. And so I'm going to come off the screen so people can see our faces a little better, uh, Pastor Chisholm. And, and Evangelist Seals, are you still there? Uh, and, and so I, I'm going to lift up my wife just in, right now in the name of Jesus, God, just strengthen her. Uh, she's been working and, and all the long hours and, and the new things that are going on, the, the replacing and rebuilding and reestablishing what's going on in her job. Give her godly wisdom and renew her strength every day. Lord, Lord, in the name of Jesus, give her the peace of God. And to all of you that are listening, to everyone who's listening, I'm praying that God will release his presence right now. Not just the anointing, but God, the manifestation. Show yourself strong and mighty every time we come together, that, that your presence will be felt, that people's lives will be, will be changed, that chains will fall off in the name of Jesus. And so one of the things I discovered in the reading um, Tommy Tenney is is in, in chapter six. If you don't have this book, I would recommend every pastor, every prayer leader, every intercessor, every person that's new in Christ, you need to read this book. It will challenge your spirit. It is very critical of the church today, the body of Christ, the physical plant of the church. Uh, but it's not tearing down any pastors. It's sharing with us that he's been a pastor, third generation pastor, and he found himself not having flowing in the anointing and the quickening of the manifestation of God's miracle signs and wonders. And he said there had to be more. And so I'm saying to you, let's, let's dwell with God that he can reveal to us how much more he has for you and I. How, how much more can God give? You think you got it all? No, stop. No, don't, no, don't deceive yourself. Don't deceive ourselves. And suddenly, suddenly, T Tommy Tenney goes to Texas and he goes into the church and he's called back the second time. And the second time, the Holy Spirit had fallen the first time. But this time, the Holy Spirit shows up in such a, a, a mighty way that after they read the uh, Second Chronicles, the Second Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people who are called by my name, he said when he finished reading, he heard the Lord. This is this is this, this pastor, his visit, his friend who he was visiting. Uh, his friend invited him to preach, but he was uh, reading some scripture, the pastor of the church. He didn't give the name of the church, but he was reading. And, and he said, right after he made that declaration of, 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 of Second Chronicles, that the Lord told him to tell us, tell the people, and I'm telling this to you, stop coming with your hands out and come with prayers of adoration. Come and worship and adore me and praise God and thank God for what I'm doing. Acknowledge the presence of God instead of always asking God to forgive you and then immediately saying, give me some, give me, give me, give me, give me. We want it, but we don't want to spend time with God. We don't want to spend time in worship and prayer. We'll come to, and so what's the relationship with this and the mountain and the dark cloud? I'm going to tell you right now. What the relationship of the dark cloud represents is the same as the backside of, of Jesus, of God, which is God is showing us the foreshadowing of Jesus. So when Moses goes by the cleft, the cleft, the rock, the mountain has a cleft, the same rock, the same stone that you got honed out of, the earth that you come out of is the ground, it's the earth, it's a stone, it's a rock, it's grass, but it's the earth. And he, there was nothing there but life, but, but dust, and he blew life, but he, he scooped you up out of the ground. And so as he passed by this cleft that he set him into, so he could see the glory, the glory represents the brightness of God, the brilliance of God that's lighter and whiter than white. 
and it's so bright that it consumes things that that you would not be able to absorb the pressure and the presence of what's called the glory, the kabod, K-A-B-O-D. The kabod or kabod of God is the full glory of his presence. And so the glory of God now reveals itself, and Moses tells the people to come to the mountain, but don't touch it, but just come because God wants to speak to you. And the Lord told me to tell the people listening to this class today that I want to move you away from being satisfied with your gift of anointings, and I want to move you to a place of praying to me and having an intimate relationship that you begin to see manifestations of miracles and signs and wonders and the atmosphere changing and the hatred that's in America gets rooted out and, and, and cast down because I've given you power to step on the at his head. I've given you power to speak that which is not as though it is because when Moses saw the, the backside of, of, of God going by, actually what that was, was the old, the old Testament was leaving and God is revealing to us the presence of Jesus and the dark side, the back side of him, which was not as bright as the front side, represents the sin nature that God saw in the world, but he's saying, I can show you. So when you come into the dark cloud, the dark cloud represents that God had to temper down his glory so he could, because you could come into his presence or he could come into your physical presence that you could see the dark side of the cloud, which represents the sin nature of man because you are not holy. He's holy. So when you say, I see through a glass dimly and I see through the glass and yet not know who I am, but I'm waiting on the the day that I will know who you are and I'll see you for who you are. That's not here yet. That's when you get to heaven, but you got to live it right down here. So someday your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life and God is calling you home and he says, well done, my faithful servant. I told you I'm, the, I'm your soldier in the army of the Lord. I told you that I'll fight your battle. I told you I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier. You don't get to be no soldier and put on the arm of God and don't think you're going to get some lickings. Don't think you're going to get knocked down. Don't think you're not going to get rejected. Many other weapons out there that have come against you. But God says, I've given you the victory. Thank you. So this cloud, this cloud, this cloud, Leviticus 6 and 2, 16 and 2. Ah, glory to God. <laughs> I get excited. Get excited of it here. Hallelujah. 16 and 2. I'm sorry if you on, 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 on. I just, all right, I ain't got to apologize. It's okay, y'all. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, Doki. So God, I just thank you for what you're sharing with us, even right now, as the manifestation of His Word. Uh, I lost that. I lost the, the link to it, but I'm gonna go there because I want you to see this. I said Leviticus 16 and two. So if you have your Bible, just go to Leviticus 16, and I got it on the screen. It says, and 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 the Lord speaking to Moses after the death of his two sons. Why did his two sons die? Because they dishonored and they took strange fire. You got to be careful how you come into the presence of God. You got to come into the presence because the atonement of what they were doing represents being at the oneness of God. Mm. And the Lord said to Moses, speak to Aaron, thy brother, that he can to come not at all times. There's a way and a time to come to God. And what, when he rent the veil, this canceled this out because you now can come to Jesus anytime. You can come to God any second of the day. You don't have to wait on Aaron or Moses or the high priest because Jesus is the high priest. Hallelujah. And so I'm sharing with you this verse because I want you to see that, that he come not at all times to, to the holy place within the veil. Remember the veil, the veil that separated the altar of prayer from the presence of God. So the altar of prayer set right in front of the veil that eventually was rent from the top down by the presence of Jesus before he died. This did, he didn't rent the veil after he died. He rent it before he died. Before he gave up the ghost, he said, Father, they know not what they do. And he said, Father, they know not what they do. Until thy hands, but before he died, the veil rent, the earth quaked. And what he did was the, the cutting and the bruising of his skin and his body represents that the, the sins and the iniquities of our sins were the chastisement was upon him. All that was to rent that veil because he, Jesus, God, loved you so much that he came and put on flesh, which represents the dark cloud of humanity because humanity was born into sin because of Adam and Eve. 
<laughs> so he shows himself in a dark cloud, which represents tampering down or covering himself up in the nature so that you could see him because he sees your sin. And what he's showing you back that scared the people wasn't they didn't have fear of the light cloud. They had a dark, they had a deep, deep fear of the dark cloud because they said, how can it go from this light to this darkness? What is this dark spirit upon us? Because he was showing them their sins. Hmm. Well, anyway, uh, that is, so there's nothing more effectual than reconciling us out of the dispensation of our darkness. So Jesus died to reconcile us, to bring us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So Jesus, God, enters our realm and brings himself into the realm and calls it a dark cloud. <laughs> but it's the presence of God, and he's coming because he cannot show all of his bright glory to you. So this represents the cleft. And it represents Jesus because you will see Jesus. You will see the hind part. What you'll see is the humanity. He said the hind part, the backside. That's the humanity. You're going to see my humanity. You can't take my glory. You can't take all the brilliance and the power and the authority and my sovereignty. So I'm going to show you the backside of me, which represents the coming of Jesus Christ. In a sinful world, I was born out of the womb of a woman with the blood and the water. But it's still, I had no sin. But I sent myself as Jesus to save you and I because I loved you just that much. And so, so you have to have this understanding of who you are. And that's where the world is falling short. We don't know who we really are. We don't really understand this power of the anointing and the power of the manifestation of God's will being carried out because we're doing his work and his assignment. When I think back, Pastor Chisholm, and I think back, Elder Jennifer Seal, Elder Jennifer Seal saw me slaying through and working through and crying and, and going through what I go through to hear and do obedience to God. And things never seem to always go the way you want them. And I told her one day, I heard the Spirit tell me, sit still stand still and see the salvation, which was a thing. But then I heard him say, there's a ram in the bush. Mm -hmm. I said, what? There's a ram. This early in the morning. I, I, I hear from the Lord. There ain't got to be no set time. See, when you have a relationship with God, you have a discerning ear. Because he said, my, my sheep. Are you sheep? What kind of sheep are you? You've been the sheep that's been in church for 30 years and don't know nothing about Jesus? You don't go to no Bible class. You hang out in the lounge, but you say the same goodbye. Say the glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> What's your intimacy with? What's in your wallet? What's in your heart? Yeah. What, what, what's in your mind that feeds the heart? What, what are you looking at all day long? What are you hearing all day long? That's why we got to watch our eye gates. You got to ask God, this little tongue, uh, this little tongue right here caused more world wars than anything else in the world because it represents the pride of man. And so, so God is saying, I want to come and show you my glory. Can I get you to come to the mountain? So you don't have to come to the mountain. You don't even have to bring no sacrifice laid. Just bring yourself. You know what your conditions are. Amen. He didn't ask you to give your rent money away to see if he's going to bless you, call the tithes. If you can't give it with a will and heart, don't give it. And don't give it expecting God to give it back through the church. Because the church don't have enough money to give back. It's God that you're giving it to, so it's going to be God that blesses you. When that check's short and you don't know why it's there, it's, that's the manifestation of answer prayer. When you get healed, healed, healed and delivered. And some get healed as they go. Some get healed instantly, but God uses all of us for his glory. And so I, I, I wanted to get to this, this next piece here. But oh, my God, time is flying so fast. Hallelujah. And so he says, nothing is more effectual than reconciling our sins that he can bring us closer to him. Because every time you give yourself to God, the more he pulls off of you. That's why he tells us we're new creatures in Christ Jesus. The old man passed away and all things become new all for the glory of God. So it's not a one-time deal where you just go dip yourself in some pool and say, I'm baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you have no prayer life. You get on the phone and you'll give a prayer request, but you don't want to pray. I don't know if, if I offend somebody, I'm sorry, but think about it. Think about it. You're going to the king of king and the Lord of lords that has all powers, that knows everything about us. 
who reconciled you, that died for you and I. And all you have to do is spend some time, some, some, some time of sincerity with God. And the only one knows how sincere you are as God. The only one knows if you've been changed as God. You can pray church all you want, but only one that knows it. But people can bear. People know when you've been living for God because your, your spirit changes. Your life changes. There's a look that changes in your face. Your behavior turns. They're, they're, you're not so easily beguiled and tricked. Doesn't mean that we're perfect. But every knee shall, 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 shall fall. Every knee shall bow. We all fall short of the glory of God. And so he's telling us in this holy place that I feel the presence. I'm trying to get us, and Lord, take me, take, take me there. Help me, Holy Ghost. I don't know how to teach this. I don't know how to do this, God. Lord, I don't know how to get people to hear you. So, Lord, you speak. For you dwell in the thickness of the darkness. It's an illustration of the sin nature that you have pulled us out of, that we can see the glorious things that you sit us in a heavenly place and let us see a glimpse of what it is. When you get a dream and you get a vision, the book of Joel says when the young dream dreams and the, and the old get visions, and then in, in Acts, I think it is, it says it's the opposite way. And so what is he telling us? Depending on the state of where you are and your age, you can get dreams and visions. But you don't get nothing. You can't get it if you don't spend time you don't labor before God. Because if he gives you a vision or a dream, he's only going to give you a part. He said, write the vision, but he can only write a little bit of it because he doesn't give us all. He didn't give Abraham everything. He just told him to go. Sometimes God will just tell you to get up and go. Just go do this. And they'll be like, what? I never went out and stood in front of no, no vacant yard or vacant buildings praying. And, and people looking at me like this, the man that lost his mind. That's all right. I did. Yeah. But Jesus, <laughs> so if you'd have asked me a year ago from 41 weeks ago, well, we're going to have this podcast. I always wanted to do it. And I've tried it. Pastor Chisholm said, I've tried it for years. But now, for some reason, God has decided to use us in this pandemic in a different way. He's calling us to be used. It's not too late. Senior citizens, I'm 71 as of this past Monday. I'm, I'm, I'm praying that 99 won't do. But I want to stay on my feet, Lord. I want to be pleasing. I want to be, I, I sing this song, if I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living is not in vain. That's a, that's a desire in my heart. God, I don't want to just sing it. I want to see the manifestation of your glory being fulfilled in people's life that I can say, look at what God has done. And I'm just a vessel just like you. And God says, we're fitly joined together. Can you imagine if we had a universal prayer all over the world? And that's what I'm hearing the Lord tell me to do. A universal 24-hour plan, a prayer that I'm putting together for the glory of God. Who are you to do that? Who who you think you are? I'm just a servant. I'm a servant. I don't pray no better than nobody else. There are other people that can out pray me, out teach me, do everything. But I know what the Lord told me to do. We've done two 16-hour prayers, and there were over 70 people praying. We don't have a church. We just have a prayer ministry that's outside the walls of the church. And I'm beckoning to you. I beseech you, brothers and sisters in Christ, partner with us in prayer. Join us in prayer. Join us on these classes. Spend time in, with your pastors. Spend time building your prayer ministries, pastors. Because this new dispensation that we're in post-pandemic, church can't be the same because people are not returning to the church the way they used to because this generation had already fallen away. And so we got to pray even harder for the oneness of God through us, this generation, those of us mature enough to reach out and, and ask God to use us for your glory. Forgive us for our shortcoming, God. Forgive us where we erred. Forgive us that prayer wasn't my priority years ago. Forgive me that I was so dead. Whatever that is, is let it go. We're talking about now. Receive it. It's in you. It's already there. Everything you need, everything is in there. You're looking for the switch? Then stop everything and just talk to God and ask him to show you which switch to hit, what, what direction to go in. You're the lamp he said, I call you to be the candle of the Lord. I'm a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your 
path, but I'm the oil. God says, I give you the oil that keeps your lamp burning. So don't put no bushel on it and put it on the hill. I put the lamp in you so the people can see the glory in your life and the joy and the happiness and the answers to prayer, the manifestation of the work that I'm doing can't be done without mankind. And that's what the devil don't want you to understand. That's what the hate that's in the world doesn't want us to understand is that you and I are his glory because he operates through you and I. Don't believe me? Ask how did the world get in the shape that it's in? Because we took our eyes off of God and so we have destroyed the planet. <laughs> the mountains and, and, and the rivers are drying up. The the, the, the Alaska and the ice caps are, are melting. Climate change and people are running around talking about, ah, oh, it's not, it's not. You're going out of space and you're leaving junk in the outer space. <laughs> you know, I know no, no stoplights with all that junk flying around in the space and you're dropping everything. That, that man's greed and selfishness is destroying the world. Mm -hmm. Rusted pipes that people are drinking out of and, and rich billionaires and trillionaires who will tell you we're going to always be rich. The poor are going to be with us. That poor was not the same poor that God was talking about in the Beatitudes. What he was talking about is the poor who are meek in heart because they have a relationship with God and they've humbled themselves. They may carry a, a, a tremendous uh, a, a blade with them, but they keep it in the sheath. They know how to use the weaponry of God. They got on the whole arm of God. They don't go on attack until God tells them to because he'll confound the mind of the wicked. Of all of you that got power and access to power and you're misusing it, God's shaking up the world. And so it's turning, it's turning, it's turning. It has turned. I'm, I'm using present tense and future tense to say it has already turned because if we say it's going to turn, it's already turned by the time I finish it because it's already done because it's the alpha and omega of his word. And so if you can believe and catch it that you've been predestinated, so everything that you desire to do and line it up with the will of God, it is his will. It will manifest because everything that you need, all the connections that you have, that you need, the knowledge, the wisdom, and understanding and the people and the resource, it will come forth and just hold on to my hand and don't count the number of people. Count the presence of God and move as I tell you to move. That's a relationship. It's based on intimacy with God. And so, and so 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, I won't go back to the scripture text so I can give you some more of this. Re rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Uh, uh, <laughs> pray what? <laughs> then he said, he said, now this is a kind of paradoxical. Pray without ceasing, but you don't know how to pray. <laughs> but if you never pray, you never discover the Holy Ghost and the unction of the Holy Spirit. See, the reason you get a prayer tongue, there's a prayer tongue, there's, there's a prayer, and, and, and speaking in tongues is one thing, but there's a prayer language. Speaking in tongues is when the prophets give the word from God or you're praying in tongues because you're praying to disguise and to hide the, the word from, from the enemy because the devil knows your thoughts. But when you begin to pray in the spirit, when that spirit begins to move, the devil can't figure it out. That's why he don't want you to have no prayer line. You've been tricked and beguiled like Adam and Eve got tricked and he didn't step up to the plate and take care of Eve. And so sin fell into the world and sin has taken over the world because the devil is present. He's the prince of the world. You was born into the world. You were born into the sin nature. But God said, I put my spirit into you and I call you forth in this dispensation of time to return unto me and I'll return unto you because rejoice, he said, and pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks unto God. First Thessalonians 5, 16. Now we came all the way from Solomon giving praise to God all the way to Paul teaching the Thessalonians. Praise him. Praise his holy name. Exalt his name. Give him the glory. That's all I'm talking about. <laughs> Ooh. See, see, y'all don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. I don't even know. I don't know how it's being received. I'm just on an assignment. I'm, I'm the mailman. I, I, I'm the mailman. I got a package for you. Do you want it or not? It's in your mailbox. It's, I, I, I got a package for you, and I got it wrapped up, and I, I'm sitting it right here in front of your door. In fact, that's the God I serve knocking. Can you hear? 
Yeah, he's calling you. He's been standing there waiting on you. He's so such a lovely God. He got all the power in the world, but he's so gracious, so kind, so loving, so thoughtful. He won't even knock your door down. He's so okay. I'll drop your gift to somebody else's gift off. Anybody don't want these gifts? I'm going over, brother. Elder Jennifer Seals on way. I will load up all y'all's gifts. <laughs> I mean, bye. That's what God is saying to the world. Bye. I got to find me a remnant of people who are going to serve me with all their hearts and worship and adore me. And that's why I said, come out of just talking about who's the anointing. No, come with the full anointing. Come with the full manifestation. Come and experience moving into the realm where God has to let you in, where God is standing and you open your heart. And he says, okay, now that you spent some time with me, let me give you some fresh revelation. Let me bring the word of God alive in you so you understand that it is a living word. It is the presence of the living God that's moving in our bodies that gives us sight to understand, to challenge people that you can do better, live better, have better, but you got to have this relationship with God. You can have the house and the home and all the garages and the beautiful cars and still got sin all over you and your soul going to hell, your family going to hell, and they don't want to hear nothing you got to say. But God is saying, keep preaching the word, keep teaching the word word. Keep being faithful to a little thing, and I'll make your rulers over little. That seed that you plant, you may not ever see the manifestation of everything that I've given you to done, but I promise you that if you continue to serve me, one day I'll say, welcome home. You'll wear a crown one day. So I did it also. Wear a crown. Wear a crown. Lord, let, let my name, let my name, let my name, let your name, let your name, let your name be in the land book. Let your name, your name is already in it. Don't fool around and take it out. You were born with your name in the Lamb's book. He know who you are. He know the beginning and the end. He has a plan for you. Enter into his presence and come out of this dark state that this world is in and enter into my light. I am the light of God, saith the Lord. I'm the light of God. Abstain from the appearance of evil. Don't even think about the evil. I want to close with this. As Timothy was teaching in 1 Timothy 3 and 14, and I'm moving on because I, I want to share this with you because I'm running out of time, and I wanted to share this with you, but he says if you go to 1 Timothy 3 and 14. It says, these things I write unto you. What is he writing unto you? Hope to come unto them shortly. Uh, this is Paul writing to Timothy. He's telling him, and just in case I tarry too long, Timothy, just in case uh, Elder Jennifer said, I spent too much time with God. Uh, I want you to know, thou mayest know how thou ought to act and behave in the house of the Lord. So when you see the men of God and the women of God and the children of God spending more time with God because they're trying to learn how to behave in the house of God because of the house of God represents the presence of the Holy Spirit of God that in my tabernacle, in my meeting place with God, in my meeting place, in your meeting place with God, your meeting place is right here. It's right here. It's not up here. It's in your soul and God speaks to you and he guides you through that the natural mind, the enemy of the mind of God, the enemy is against God. It's against everything that the will of God wants to do and that's why you're fighting like you're schizophrenic and paranoid because you don't want to do what's right because I try to do what's right and I know what to do it right but yet my flesh don't want to do it right and unless you've been changed by the grace of God unless you've been saved and sanctified and set apart because you spent some time with him that you understand that God's church is his house he's the architect he's the builder six things I want to give you God's church is built by him he's the architect he's the builder he lives there he provides for it and he's honored by you in it if you just honor him because he deserves deserves all the honor and the glory and the pride, and he's God. We ought to not think of the Godhead like it's some gold or silver. It's not. And I'm reading scripture text out of this. And so uh, Acts 17 and 28, we all come to him offering. And so he says here, God is a living God. He's the foundation of our life. He, he, he is life in himself. This, this, is, this is Timothy. This is Paul talking to Timothy, that God is life in all things of his creature. And in him we live and we move and we know our being. We have our being. That's Acts 17 and 28. These are scriptures that God is saying that, that everything, you live and move and have your being, being, being in me. Open up and let me in, say, God, I'm here. I've never left you alone. For as much as we are offering 
offsprings of God, we ought to not think of ourselves as Godheads. So even though he's given us to know the mysteries of God, the mysteries of God at time. First Corinthians 4, go well, look it up. He says that I've given you to know the mysteries of God, that you are stewards, that you are stewards and, and, and overcomers. The Revelations 3 and 12, he says, him that overcometh, I will make you the pillars, the pillars in the temple. I no longer pillars just in the church. You're pillars, you're the king in your community. You're the pillar. You give moral direction to the community to the family. You establish God's righteousness and the right way so people can follow the plan that the narrow, the path is narrow. The way is wide, but the path is narrow. The, the, the God, Jesus is the way, the life, and the truth. He sees all of these things, but you won't know that if you don't have a relationship with him. Turn off the television. Sacrifice some time with God. And so I just wanted to stop by and share with you that you're the, you, you are in the temple when you pray to God. You're in a private place with God. It's a sanctuary. And, and that sanctuary, that pillar represents you. What you represent as an illustration, an analogy, is that the pillar represents the strength of God in you. When people see how you have persevered, when people see you and how he's changed your life and you become so more so much more patient and understanding because you've been through so much and you know if it had not been for the Lord, where would you be? Where would I be? And so I want to close with this uh, and to, to my sons that are listening, my daughter said, there you go. This is, this is number two closing. He probably got one more, but let me close with this because it is his building and the place where he dwells, where he worships. He is our mediator. He is our God. And when we have a relationship with him, we can overcome all things because he's given us his grace. And his grace gives us favor. But the grace represents the glory of God and the sovereignty of God and who he is. Because this is New Testament. It's just the sovereign power of God, which is his grace, which is, which is wrapped up in his glory. He can only give you parts of it. And so he walk in the profession like a pillar established in truth of the righteousness and the word of gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news, go into all the world and spread my word. Tell people what I've done for you. Don't be ashamed of the sin that you made. The worst thing you could do is be ashamed, say you, you're not ashamed and you still live in the same way. Man, I was, man, I made so many terrible mistakes. I was a hypocrite. And still, I ain't perfect. But that's not the purpose. The purpose of it is to let God perfect in me my weaknesses and strengthen me so that I'm no longer weak in those areas. That I'm willing every time I get before God. And I come to tell you, the closing thought on this is to reverence God because he's the owner. We are citizens in his in His heavenly kingdom, when he comes back for us, when you die, your soul is going somewhere. And if the world don't even talk about what is your soul, when this body is in the ground, where is that soul going to? Where is that spiritual reality of who you really are? Where is it going, to heaven or to hell? You choose this day who you follow. You want to follow God? Or you just want a, 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 a microwave production to get something done real quick. Anybody that has studied this word, anybody that's serving God has been through something. And let me say, God has brought you through something. He brought you out. We see the manifestation of glorious things that people are doing in people's lives and, and great cathedrals being built. That cost those men and women something. But the power ain't in the building. I was in you. And what's missing, people of God, is the power of God already filled up in you because the cloud of glory in you has been filled up and you coming with the cloud of glory in you to the church. Can you imagine if all of us come together on the same page with that kind of teaching, with that kind of spirit, with that kind of desire, fitly joined together and on one accord? 
That's why the fivefold ministry don't exist in many churches, because it takes God to teach you, to lead you, and to you to surrender in order to be able to receive people who have gifts beyond your gifts. The top managers ain't the smartest people. The top pastors ain't the smartest people. They're the ones who can recognize gifts and help build those gifts up and bring them closer to him and her. That's what's missing in the body of Christ. The apostle sets the order of God's word. That's an office. These are five offices. The evangel, the prophet gets a word from God that the pastor may not get. And that he can operate in all these gifts, but he ain't going to have, he's not going to be dominant, but in one, maybe two. Only one that had all five of these gifts was Jesus, because he was God in glory, in flesh. So he put in place the prophet to speak a revelation of what God's showing us and to hear God in the universe today. Then, then he sent the evangelists to go out, to, to be in the church, to help edify the body of Christ. And then go out and draw all men unto me, saith the Lord, and teach my word and spread the good news. And then tell people, yeah, this is my church. You can go to any church, but we want you to just get in church. I'll draw all men to me. And I don't own nothing. I don't own you. I don't own your soul. I can't tell you where your soul is going, but I can point you to who knows. And that's who you got to fear. And then you have the, 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 the pastor. And the pastor has a heart after this for the sheep that God puts you over. And then there's the teacher. That's the teacher who has a responsibility to teach this word. But he can't teach this word. He can't understand it unless none of them can understand it. They don't spend no time in it. But it takes the Holy Spirit to give us his godly knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of how to bring that together to work together for the glory of God. You talking about some power? Build your church on the foundation of prayer and, and sound Bible teaching and recognize the fivefold ministry gifts in your house and your gifts and anointing and, and begin to pray to cast out demonic force. God releases that power because that's what's missing in the church because the church ain't operating in order because we, we, not the church, we the church. We say church meaning our denomination. But I come to tell you, and God is saying to the world, I'm not talking to your church building. I'm talking to every soul that has an ear to hear that I am saying, return unto me, saith the Lord God. The Holy Spirit is speaking to the world. I want you to, to, to turn, return to a place of praise, but start with adoration, adoring me. I want you to praise me for what I've done, but I want to hear the love. And so I close with that. Where's the love of God? And so great is the mysteries of God's godliness. God was made manifest in the flesh, but it was the word that said it. And he gave us to know the word. Um, I may be back teaching this again. Uh, <laughs> I didn't finish, but it's so much more, so much more. And I praise God. And I hope this has been a blessing to somebody. Um, <laughs> I'm, I, know, I, I know I stayed on the screen and, and people can't see me, but set that little box in the corner. Uh, but this 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 is about not being seen. It's about getting in this word. Amen. So people of God who are listening, if you get in the word, get this Bible, you see us teaching every Thursday. We have different guests on. And Pastor Chisholm will be on uh, December 2nd. And uh, um, I believe uh, we have to confirm with Apostle uh, James Burks and Apostle uh, Prophetess uh, Deidre Burks. And we continue to lift up uh, Apostle uh, Prophetess Deidre Burks and her speedy recovery. Um, but in, in the meantime, I do want to tell you that um, we do have uh, um, some, some special guests that are coming up uh, in November. Uh, Sasha Dalton, I'm supposed to be on next week, uh, talking about her book, Unplugged. Um, uh, about the, the Gospel Fest of Chicago. Uh, the week after, we have Professor Michael West out of, uh, of uh, uh, African Studies out of Pennsylvania University. So we got some guests coming. They're coming with some, uh, some real gifts of God and some knowledge. And we may have uh, Bishop Ray Lee uh, from Greater Deliverance Center, uh, Church of God in Christ Convocation. So God bless you all. And we look forward to you, Pastor, being back with us uh, anytime. And uh, I'll reach out to others.
Bless you, Father. I thank you for this word. I thank you for what you're doing in our lives. I praise you. I thank you. I exalt your name. We give you all the glory. God, touch touch us, oh God. Restore and renew in us to have the right mind. That's, that we become a sweet smell in your nostril, God. That's our desire. And Lord, anything that's not right in me, fix me, God, that I can be a better servant, a better man of God, a better husband, a better father, grandfather, a better friend, and a better helper. Bless over Pastor Chisholm, the gifts from God ministry. Bless over uh, co-pastor A. Chisholm, oh God. Keep them, God, with longevity of life. Devil, you're a liar. Get your hands off all of my friends and family. Bless over Pastor Jerry Washington, Mary Washington, oh God. Bless their ministries and Living Hope Kingdom ministry. We count it done to your glory. Yes, God. Bless over a lot of church. And so, God, we thank you. Pastor, any closing you. thoughts? <laughs> well, I just want to... Uh give you this for your for you. Uh, as you were speaking, the Lord gave me Nehemiah 8 and 10. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Let the, me get, hold on, let me get a pen. Let me get, <laughs> Nehemiah then, what? Is that the wall? 8 and 10. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes, yes, yes. And so yes. whatever's going on and however people are responding to you, you're strengthened by teaching the word of God, exalting God. And so, you know, just just revel in it and, and give it give, give it people what God gives to you because it's a blessing. My wife told me to tell you thank you for the teaching. And, and, and the final word is uh, you have given us what we needed for right now. And there's no more need of any, any discernment of it, any more explanation. We need to just feed on what you gave us. And for me, Anton, I, uh, Pastor Anton, for me, when I when I do a word like that, my desire is that if, if a person takes away one word, that will that will give them something to work through and work with, then then I've been successful. Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. And so so I know that we're going to take away and start working on some of this stuff. Uh, Pastor Marion Johnson says we must participate in the process. And so yeah. what you're giving us is our challenge to participate in the process of moving from the anointing to glory. And so let's get busy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless and you. so I, I want to reach out to uh, Pastor uh, uh, Marion Johnson, Pastor Vicki Johnson, have them as our guests the first of the year. Um, I know right now I may be busy, but I do want them because they, they have been a blessing in my life uh, long before this day. Uh, you Lord. know. And so we, we never forget. So thank you. Thank Keep you. Keep reaching out. Keep reaching out to him sooner or later. Amen. Amen. In due Amen. season. Amen. Amen. Keep Amen. Keep Amen. Amen. Right. That's, that's, tell him I'm after the, I'm after the big fish. I don't want no little fish. I take them all. I take them all. Amen. But I want you, Pastor Johnson. I need you. I need you. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor, God Pastor, bless. Pastor Vicky Johnson. Love you. Love you, Pastor. Thank you, my friend. Peace and love. Amen. Amen. Peace and love. Got you down for the second we'll be there all right thank you thank you bless you